vaguely familiar. I was wondering uh, what uh, band was doing that. All I know is they have a rhythm guitarist that's out of this world, Chili. Good morning, Chris. Good to hear from you. Nice to be up with you as well, Chili. Good morning. Uh, we're handing over right now to the Orbit One team. It was a pleasure to put together a plan for you for today, and we're looking forward to the EVA tomorrow. All right, Chris, and uh, we look forward to executing your plan, and uh, we see we got a bunch of tips messages on board already, and we'll get right into them. Thanks a lot for all the hard work your ship put in for us. Talk to you tomorrow. Go ahead, Chili. And Dave, that's a beautiful tribute to uh, Bob Overmeyer. And uh, I want to let you all know that our crew is, uh, sends their deepest sympathies to his family. Uh, Bob was, uh, he lived life to the fullest. Uh, he was quite a wonderful man. And uh, those who met him surely never will forget him. And uh, I remember most that, uh, among many things, that he was very instrumental in the work on uh, space station. And uh, so I think uh, uh, we're charged to carry on with his work. And thanks very much for sending up the poem. 
You're welcome, Charlie. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, Dave, we got a good fix on the Comet High in Kentucky right now, and uh, it is absolutely beautiful. We're trying to take some images of it with the uh, F4 uh, night lens, and uh, hopefully they'll turn out. But uh, the tail is absolutely long. It looks like it goes uh, to the end of the universe. Incredible. We're on camera Delta. Maybe you could help us orient the camera. Point it straight at the mirror base block. It's between the solar rays of the mirror base block. Okay. I would say tilt 90 and pan about 30. We'll start there. 30 to the right. Right. Good morning. Do you have an opening statement before we take questions? Uh, I'd like to make an opening statement, and then I'll ask uh, Yura to make one also. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone aboard the Atlantis Mir Space Complex here. And I want to begin by first recognizing the uh, Mir 21 crew, the three people right in front of me. Uh, it used to be two, but now three. And, and the rest of the STS-76 crew here in the back row, uh, when we're one shorter than what we took off with. And that's been a major accomplishment for us uh, on this flight. Uh, bringing Shannon up here to the Mir Space Station for the first of many uh, visits by U.S. astronauts to the Mir Space Station, and uh, we're very proud to have participated in that. In addition, we've uh, been uh, working really hard lately and are uh, quite pleased with the results of the plan that Ron, uh, excuse me, Ron brought together uh, as our payload commander for the transfer plan, and uh, we've had. Uh, three uh, very productive days transferring uh, supplies to Mir to ensure that it can continue in its mission uh, here in Earth orbit. And uh, on top of that, uh, I think the BioRack, Linda, has been going really really well also. And so uh, I would like to welcome you all aboard, uh, and I'll pass the microphone now to uh, Commander Onyefrienko for his welcoming uh, statement. This is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press for Dr. Lucid. I'm wondering if you could describe your initial impressions as you floated into Mir the other day. What struck you most about the space station? Uh, any surprises? Well, when we floated in, it felt pretty much uh, like I was coming home because I'd been in the uh, trainer there in uh, Star City uh, quite a few times. And so um, I felt very comfortable coming in. And then, of course, Yuri and Yuri were there. And they welcomed us very, very warmly. And so it was sort of like uh, coming back home and, uh, to see your friends. And they, Yuri and Yuri have gone out of their way to make all of us feel very welcome and very comfortable here in their home. Uh, Bill Hart with CBS for Commander Chilton, I guess. Uh, uh, Commander, as you mentioned, with Shannon Lucid's flight here, at least through phase one, there'll be a permanent uh, U.S. presence in space. And if phase one overlaps the first flight to uh, International Space Station, it's a permanent presence for the indefinite future. What's the si significance of that in your view? I mean, historically, is that a major milestone for the U.S. program? How do you look at that? Yes, Bill, I do. Uh, I think, you know, uh, we want to establish a permanent presence in space. And uh, from a historical spec perspective, you can look back on the uh, discovery of America and the early colonization of it. Uh, and so we're, actually we're kind of beginning the colonization of space here. Uh, we've been to and from, just as the early explorers were to and from uh, North America, from Europe, and then uh, finally they settled and then they started to do uh, productive work over there and uh, founded this great nation. So I kind of look at it in the same uh, similar light where uh, we've been coming to and from space and when we get here permanently then we can start seeing the, uh, the fruits of our labors. And a quick uh, question for Shannon Lucid. Uh, Dr. Lucid, obviously uh, in two days or so you're going to be left there on your own for several months with the two Yuris. I'm just wondering, is, is undocking approaches, if, if now that the initial rush of excitement is over from getting there, if, if that feeling of watching the shuttle depart, how you might respond to that, or, or is it just all business for you up there? Well, of course I'll be, uh, you know, I'll feel bad to see the uh, 76 crew depart because I've really enjoyed working with them and being a part of um, uh, that crew. But 
I've also enjoyed being a part of uh, the Mir 21 crew. And frankly, when the uh, 76 crew departs, then we'll be able to sort of settle down into a routine <laughs> and start, you know, getting a little productive work done uh, on the science and things like that. No, I wasn't trying to be unproductive. I just mean that we don't have, like, a routine yet. This is Irene Brown again with uh, UPI for Shannon again. Um, you've been with NASA a long time through many administrators and space shuttle program changes and space station designs. Did you ever imagine that the shuttle's first port in space would be a, uh, would be a Russian craft or that you, who has had a personal brush with war, would be stationed on it? No, this is sort of beyond my wildest dreams. I never envisioned that I'd be sitting here with Americans and Russians on board the Russian space station. So um, just goes to show that you can never, you know, plan on everything that's going to happen in life. You guys look good. Uh, good morning, America. This is Houston. Please call Atlantis for a voice check. All right, uh, Columbia, this is uh, Charlie Gibson in New York uh, on Good Morning America. Do you hear me? I sure do. Hello again, Charlie. How are you today? Atlantis. I'm sorry. I said Columbia, and I should say Atlantis. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm off on my uh, airships here, but it's uh, good to see all of you, and you can hear me. We can hear you loud and clear, Charlie. All right, thanks. Okay, we will we, we will start in about uh, 10 seconds on our end. Colonel Chilton, uh, let me start with you. Are you all up there disappointed that Apollo 13 uh, didn't get best picture last night? Well, believe it or not, that's the first we've heard of it. Uh, so you're breaking the bad news to us. Uh, I, I'm sure we've all seen it. I know. Uh, I, Commander Oni Franco and, uh, and uh, Board Engineer Yusachev have seen that movie, and they really liked it, and everybody else in the crew has seen it and really loved it. And I'm a big fan of Tom Hanks and Ron Howard. Well, the Academy may not have gone for Apollo 13. They chose Braveheart as best picture, but we can safely say that a poll of the Atlantis crew and of the Soviets came out with Apollo 13 as best picture, correct? I think that'd be safe to say, although, you know, we watched Braveheart in quarantine just before we launched, and uh, that was a good movie, too. <laughs>
you have a kind of sleep schedule that only Joan and I can relate to, I think. Colonel Chilton, we tend to lose track of some of these missions in space, but this one, obviously, very much a first, and you should run it down for us. Well, you bet. Uh, it's the first uh, time that a woman has uh, joined, an American woman has joined the, uh, the Mir crew, and uh, Shannon Lucid, uh, we uh, was originally a member of the STS-76 crew, and we had the official handover the other day. She's joined the Mir-21 crew with uh, Cosmonaut Ani Franco and Yusachev, and so that's a first. And it's also the beginning. It's the beginning of a continuous U.S. presence in space. We're getting ready for another first tomorrow, and that's when uh, Linda and Rich, you see here in the front, are going to make uh, a historic spacewalk. It'll be the first time people have gone out the door uh, from a... U.S. shuttle while attached to a space station, and in this case, the Mir space station. And it, it's going to be a special moment tomorrow, and we're all looking forward to it. All right, so we're going to have a series of Americans up there, at least through 1998, and what's going to happen during uh, those two years plus? Well, there'll be several things. Number one, it'll give us, the Americans, a chance to know what it's like to... Uh, have a continuous presence in space, and also to get more information on what happens when people spend very long times in space. The Russians have had a continuous presence in space for the last 10 years, and uh, this is the first time that uh, the Americans have a chance to start learning what it means to have a continual uh, presence in space. And so we'll learn about that. It will also help us learn what we, uh, operational, what we need to know when we uh, start operating the space station, and we will also learn more about cooperating with other nations, which the space station will depend upon how we can cooperate with other nations to a very large degree. And in addition to that, we'll be conducting some scientific experiments and we'll hopefully uh, collect some new data. Well, there we are back on those time schedules again that get so confusing for people. But, uh, uh, Rich, what's uh, the purpose of the spacewalk? Charles, there's uh, three main purposes. The, the first purpose is to install four experiments on the exterior of the docking module, which is attached to the mirror core module. And uh, then we're also going to evaluate some special tools and equipment for building the space station. And the third thing is we're going to bring back a camera, which was installed on the docking module for SDS-74's docking mission. Good morning. I'm Commander Kevin Chilton aboard the Space Shuttle Atlantis, about 200 miles above the planet Earth, joined here by the Mir-21 crew from the Russian Mir Space Station. And this is Commander Onyfrienko. Good morning, America. America. Terrific, guys. Terrific. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Absolutely marvelous.